Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. My name is Tadej. My name is Taylor. Hello. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about prisms. We've already spoke about roof prisms from Schmidt and Pehan, poro prisms and so on. Um, but today we're going to talk about a very unique form of prisms called the poro perger prisms. Yeah, true. We have, I think, quite successful videos or good videos about differences between Schmidt and Pechan, Abe Koenig and Poro prisms and so on. We don't talk that much about Perger Poro because it's so rare, but we do receive questions from customers when they're asking, what is this Perger Poro prism? So today, if we start, when was Perger Poro prism actually shown to the market, when it was first introduced? Poro Perger prism was first introduced on EVA uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was about at the time when they released the HDB models for the first time. When they were so introduced. the new Geovitz. Geovitz well, HDB. Banana-like Geovitz. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the first time, 2013, mm -hmm. uh, when these Perger, Perger Poro prisms were first introduced into a uh, binocular. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, what would you say are the most common features of these very uncommon prisms? Yeah, well, the most common feature is, or the first feature which you see, is the, the shape. Because we all know that Poro uh, prism binoculars, the traditional Poro prism binoculars, they are very distinctive in their looks. So with Perger Poro, the only way you are able to see it immediately is that it has some, we always make fun, like banana shape yeah. of, the, of the housing. The binoculars with this prism have a banana shape of the housing, which is actually ergonomically really pleasing and really easy to use. So this is the reason why Geovitz HDBs and the new HDRs, which are basically the same as HDBs, are so ergonomically, I would say, well thought and uh, well made. Then the other, um, I would say, advantage of Perger Poro Prism is that it has higher light transmission rate than normal Schmidt and Pechan roof prisms. Mm -hmm. And it offers a little bit better recognition of depth, of depth of field. So usually people say that poro prism binoculars have more like a 3D look of the image. So it's easier for you to see what is in front, what is behind and so on. So you have a better pers perspective of the, of the, I would say, the whole surroundings and, and the depth of field. This is something what is very unique. So you get better light transmission rate and you get this 3D um, sensation when you're looking through, through these binoculars, which you usually don't <coughs> get when you're looking through the binoculars with uh, Schmidt and Pechan prisms, which most of these binoculars yeah. uh, from competition with uh, integrated laser rangefinder or without are, are used. So you're able to find this prism only in Geovitz uh, and it gives you better light transmission rate and gives you a better 3D. It's also very important to, uh, to notice that only top quality rifle, uh, binoculars from Leica, Juvitz, yeah. this, have, have this feature. Yeah, no other binoculars by Leica have this feature. I'm still waiting and I would be really pleased to see what would happen if they would produce a model with this type of prism without the integrated laser rangefinder because they're, they're top of the line, the best binoculars without the laser rangefinder are Noctivitz, but they use, I would say, classical Schmidt and Pechan roof prism. Um, it will be interesting to see what, is, what are they able to produce with this prism in terms of optical performance. Since, since Geovitz are a little bit behind Noctivitz, but they are, at least in my opinion, one of the best rangefinding binoculars in terms of optical performance, if not the best, because of this prism. Um, so today, is anybody else except Leica using this prism? No, as a matter of fact, not. Leica is the first one who introduced this uh, binocular with this sort of prisms in 2013, as we mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, no manufacturer, no other manufacturer yet uh, decided to go for these types of prisms. Yeah. Uh, which is it's quite interesting, actually, because we know a ton of, I would, a few great yeah. top uh, manufacturers who produce binoculars I don't know, Swarovski, Zeiss, um, many others, yeah. and many others, but they don't have 
this prisms in their construction, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. It's, it's really interesting because, let's say, Abe Koenig prism, which is also quite rare, is still used by a couple of producers. It's uh -huh. used by Zeiss, it's used by Swarovski, it's used by Doctor, or now they're called Noblex. And you can still find some producers which are using it. Uh, with Poro Perger or Perger Poro, nobody else except Leica uses. And for me, it was a really bold move for Leica to do something what no one else is doing. Yeah. Um, Geoit as a whole was a really bold move because it was the first range finding binoculars with all the ballistic integrated. But then on top of that it also has the prism which no one else used it before, mm -hmm. at least to my knowledge. And nobody is currently using it except Leica. Yeah, and they implemented it with class, we have to say really. Yeah, the shape yeah. of this binocular, as Taylor mentioned, is really something else. Mm -hmm. And on top of all optical optical performances for, outstanding. for because most of the Ranger uh, Laser range finding binoculars have problems with optical performance, but not the Jewits. The Jewits, when you look through them, the optical performance is just splendid, and you still get the laser range finding. Yeah, so, um, I think a good choice for Leica to to go really, I would say, boldly into the market with a new type of prism, and I hope that this uh, spirit didn't left them, so that we will see similar steps in the future. Yeah. Okay. I think we covered. I think we did, so you can do the... Yeah, uh, so if you have any additional questions about Poro Perger prisms from Leica, feel free to write uh, a comment on our YouTube section uh, or write us over our emails, no problem. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Take care, until next time. Thank you, bye.